Uh, so that was on the part of the bridge on Kenyan. And uh, how far did you get on uh, the other uh, side of the bridge? Well, um, I got as far as uh, what was very standard in the 1980s was very confusing and unresolving clear certainty rundowns and dynamic clear special intensive. So um, I got what was the normal end product of that of being confused about whether or not I was clear. And from uh, from that point forward, things stalled for a long time, but I certainly enjoyed continuing to audit people. And uh, then, um, after I left the church, there was a long period of inactivity, which is very common when people leave the church, because you're basically um, very strongly, I'll, I'll use the word programmed, you know, it's very strongly reinforced that uh, the only safe place to do Scientology is, is inside the church. And so you actually become fearful because you're really led to believe that everybody outside the church is a lunatic, is a squirrel, who intentionally corrupts the tech. And you're actually, it's actually dangerous to go in session. Despite the fact that if anybody reads the Dianetics book and reads a section on the auditor and the mind's protection, uh, any case is better open than unopened, period. And if you read what I think about auditors and how every auditor is a valuable being wherever they are and whatever they're doing, whatever they're auditing, then, you know, you let that be your guide and nothing else, that and your own experience, okay? But uh, outside the church, um, I have done more auditing. I got my clear cycle sorted out uh, beautifully, you know? I, um, I uh, really started to, uh, my first auditing after leaving the church was, was, uh, was actually a correctly done interiorization rundown. So I'd given many, delivered many as an auditor, but this was the first time it had been correctly handled with me. And then interiorization, exteriorization ceased to be any sort of an issue. And after that, um, there's just a, a great being out in the world named Ken Urquhart. And uh, what happened was uh, I lost my son to an illness. And uh, I knew of Ken a little bit, had just a little bit of communication with him, and he's just such a, a generous spirit. He contacted me and said, Dex, you know, I'd like to offer you some free auditing to help you through that, you know, if you'd like, and here's where I am. And so that was my next auditing, and that was very, very helpful. Thank you, Ken. You're the best. And from there, the next auditing cycle that I had was sor sorting out my, my clear, my state of clear, which... I found could actually be done, and it wasn't even a big deal. You know, uh, it really pointed out to me how convoluted uh, uh, the church's application of tech has become, very sadly, because this was just a beautiful action, and my auditor was John Nunez in the, in the Sacramento area, and uh, he's just perfect. John's a great friend, and uh, he's a great auditor, and he did a great job. Thank you, John. So uh, from there, um, I started uh, my solo course, and uh, I just recently completed the uh, the auditing part, the solo auditing part, in which I had tremendous, huge charge off, tremendous changes in cognitions, and I was very expertly supervised and case supervised on that by uh, Frank Willis Davis of the Midwest Tech Center. My, my thanks to Frank. Okay. Um, oh, there was one other thing. Um, power processing. I've gotten power processing, and this was actually before doing my solo course. And this is a bit of an interesting story. But uh, there's a fellow who was the senior case supervisor for the East U.S. continent back when I was the lead HGC auditor in New York. And um, I uh, ran into him on uh, ex Scientologist message board. And I hadn't really had direct contact with him when we were both in the New York area. And um, anyway, um, he had posted a very interesting series of uh, a thread all about solo knots and why in the church people have the problems they do with solo knots. And uh, I thought it was just brilliant. He explained things very well. And uh, I, I got in touch with him and we shared some memories and, and some viewpoints about our days in the 80s in the New York area. And he urged me very strongly to get power processing before I did my OT levels. I am clear. I know a lot of people think, well, it says somewhere you shouldn't do power if you're clear. Um, 
well, I always felt there was something wrong with that, that CLEAR should be denied power processing. And uh, that was all the encouragement I needed, okay? And uh, I did have a friend, I do have a friend, Frank Pate, who's very expert and knowledgeable about power processing, among other people in the field. And uh, I went with my trusted case supervisor, Frank Willis Davis, again at Midwest Tech Center, as a CS, gave me the go-ahead, and uh, that was amazing. The gains on power processing are just, just wonderful. I'm training on power processing now, and I'm reading everything there is that I can find on it, issued by the church and other people who are involved and around the development of power processing. And uh, uh, frankly, you're really missing something if you don't get power processing. Right now, a lot of cases are being cracked. People who have done their quote-unquote entire bridge who are considered resistive or stalled cases. And uh, it just every single one of them is having new levels of happiness and awareness. Nobody should be without it. So I'm training on that, so I will soon be delivering power processing. So from what I hear, you met quite a number of uh, uh, great tech specialists out there in the field, yes. didn't you? Yes. Uh, very much so. Okay. Um, what do you know about the uh, independent Scientology community, may I ask you? Independent Scientology community. Well, it is unlike the church, it is a community. It's a real community. I say this frequently. I've got the best friends in the world. I do. You know, um, I could name a lot of names. You know, um, got to sit down and talk with uh, Pierre. Brilliant guy and a, and a charming guy in person really is. And I uh, spoke with so many people who had, had great auditing from Pierre. Uh, Frank, my buddy Frank Pate, who just, uh, we talk on the average about two or three times a day. I've actually been uh, auditing him uh, lately. And uh, it's great to be able to return the flow. And uh, he's so knowledgeable about uh, his experience with the St. Hill Special Briefing Course. And uh, I've gotten to know David and Aida Thomas, and they're just the best. They're just uh, wonderful, close friends, and uh, a great source of, of information also when I need it. Beautiful people. And uh, there's so many more, I'm probably leaving a dozen out, but uh, it is a community, and it's a, it's a Ray Robles. Yeah, I can't forget Ray Robles, John Nunez. Um, all wonderful people, all people you can depend on and count on when you have a technical question or you need a service, or need to find out where to get a service, eh, can't go wrong, really.